play. Shifting from guard to tackle because of the bar injury is Joe Brown, a 265-pound junior, and the other tackle is Scott Schmidt, a 5'10", 245-pound junior. At tight end is a guy we've talked about, Bobby Williams, 6'4", 195 pounds, a senior. The Hutchinson News ranked him among the top 16 players in preseason in Class 5A in the state of Kansas. One of the split ends will be Dustin Brown. He has 11 catches on the season. The other one is Corey Roberts, the backup quarterback who's got 12 passes this year. One of the running backs, Ryan Gardner at the Brian Omi. He is having a great season. Suffered the sprained ankle and missed the Dodge City game, but Browns can bounce back rather with a big performance last week against Gardner. In the slot is Eric Love. Kinsinger play in terms of the net average where the other team takes the ball on kickoffs. I'm guessing it has to be right about the 20 yard line. You think maybe even inside the 20 this season because Aguilar, if he doesn't kick it into the end zone, he kicks it so high in the air that you get great coverage. Well, here comes Aguilar approaching the ball. He'll swing that right leg through and kick a low line drive kick that bounces into the arms of an up man at the 25, past the 30 and down past the 35 to the 37. And the guy who picked it up for the Great Bend Panthers was Josh Simonson, normally a linebacker, and that's just about the worst kickoff we've seen all season from Bill Aguilar. Well, Jason Heinrich will be with his uh, football team to line of scrimmage. The 6'1", 180-pound senior QB has a strong arm. He's thrown for 523 yards this season, four touchdowns, a couple of interceptions. Back to throw on first down. Looks over the middle, lofts a high pass down the sidelines and incomplete. He led the receiver there, Marcus Reed, just a little bit too much. Bill Aguilar in the coverage. And I think the fellow who was really open this time was Bobby Williams, who was uh, slipping out of here over on our side. Uh, on the right side, he curled in at about the 47 yard line, and he was absolutely wide open. Well, that was Dustin Brown they were actually aiming for there on the first down play. Now he sprints out of the backfield into the sideline right in front of us. Second and 10, the football spotted just shy of the 37 yard line. Wide right, Terry Delp, the guy who hasn't played football since his freshman season, but has got eight passes this year. Two men in the backfield, Gardner and Reed, a slot to the right, and a handoff comes to Ryan Gardner. He's hit in the backfield and dropped for a loss. Robbie Lanning hit him first. Well, that's exactly what you have to do with the Ryan Gardner. He's not a real big kid, about 5'9", uh, probably weighs 185, 190 pounds. But you need to get him in that backfield before he gets his uh, momentum built up. Uh, if you can hit him before he gets the line of scrimmage, uh, you're going to give him a, a long night on the ground when he's on the backfield. A three-yard lo three loss for Gardner, an all-state baseball player. Now Corey Roberts wide right. Wide to the left, Dustin Brown on a third and 13 play coming up. The football back inside the great bin 35. Roberts, Heinrich now rolling to his right. Smart and tackle for a sack. Bobby Wilson dropped him down back inside the 25 at the 23. Well, he was waiting for his uh, primary receiver. Looks like Corey Roberts over here on this side to come open. He was covered. And uh, before he could break into the open, Bobby Wilson had him wrapped up and thrown for a uh, about a seven or eight yard loss. No fourth and Garden City to go for Great Bend. Obviously a punt now. And on to do the duties is all whack punter Bobby Williams. Not only is he a great defensive end and tight end, he's a terrific punter. He boots it away. A high hanging kick. Phil Aguilar takes it at his own 40. Waits for some blockers. Doesn't get much. Now he sheds one man to the 45 and gets drilled at the 44 yard line, surrounded by Panthers. Redskins have won nine meetings in a row against Great Bend. Last year, 42 to 14 was the final, with Jason Dunlop having a huge game. Chapman under center, backs in the eye, and a handoff to Alsip, second man through, past the 45 and drug down from behind at about the 46 yard line. So just a little bit of a pickup there for Montoya Alsip on first down, stopped by Sean Wybara. Bobby Williams was in the backfield, uh, just barely got a hand on him until he uh, before he uh, broke through. Uh, Bobby Williams is going to be in that defensive back or that offensive backfield all night. Second and eight. No receivers here and a double tight end set for the Redskins. And they give it on the reverse over to Eric Love around the end to the right side. He dives forward in front of the Redskins bench and won't let make it to midfield. So a gain of perhaps three yards as the ball will be shot, uh, spotted at the 48. So just a couple yards picked up by Eric Love, third and a long six for the Redskins. 
Mark Chapman probably, well, maybe will be passing now. He did a great job last week, 9 of 15 through the air for 124 yards. Did throw one interception. Three men in the backfield. Chapman fakes the reverse, now rolls around to the left himself, turns the corner upfield, and lunges ahead. He needed to get to the great men 46 for a first down, and he'll be close. Terry Dale puts the uh, they faked that reverse, and then Chapman took it to the opposite side of the field as the reverse was going. Took it right down the hashes, and they'll bring the chains out to measure here on that third down and the sixth carry. Chapman did it all last week, 124 yards through the air, 167 on the ground. Scored two touchdowns, and the Redskins are shy by about the foot, maybe 18 inches. Matt Hensley running into the game from the sideline, and Liberal's going to go for it. Now this is uh, classic Gary Cornelson right here. Uh, usually if it's across the 50 yard line and less than a yard, he will try it quickly uh, early in the game. And then he's got the win at the back. Chapman sneaks it ahead and he'll have that first down. Great line surge up the middle following his center, Robbie Lanning. Chapman got at least a yard. He only needed about 18 inches. And there's the first first down of the football game. The Redskins take it to the Panther 45. No score. We're just underway, really, here at Redskin Field. Liberal against the Great Bend Panthers in the second-to-last home game in 1994. Though perhaps the Redskins will be looking at a state playoff game here at home. Fake handoff to Alsip. Now rolling right is Chapman, and he's going to go a long way. He's to the 30, down the sideline, 20, to the 10, to the 5, touchdown. Oh, my. 45 yards down the right sideline. And around the right end, Chapman gives the Redskins a lead. Must have been some great blocking on the parts of the Redskins. Hemsley on to hold. Aguilar has been perfect this year, 18 to 18 on point afters. The kick is up and it's perfect. He's 19 to 19 now. 7 0, 8 18 to go in the first quarter. The Redskins on top of Great Ben, and you're listening to Redskins football on KSCB. Boy, they did not even come close to Chapman's on a roll. Where's our TV timeout? Man, there's a couple of good looking cheerleaders, man. Another low one. Well, on the kickoff, Bill Aguilar kicked another line drive, but it bounced at the 10 and skipped into the end zone for a touchback. Great Ben's football at their own 20. That was a ricochet, Josh, not a skip. <laughs> Jogging out of the game for the Great Ben Panthers before even start this possession is Brian Walter, a tight end. Wide to the left is Dustin Brown. Two backs in the backfield, and Heinrich hands it off to one of them. That's uh, Ryan Gardner, who muscles his way up the middle for close to five yards. Oh, one of the linebackers drug him down that line for the Redskins. Getting off the bottom of the pile, I think, is Roger Hoffman. Now yeah, Bobby Wilson is in there. The uh, linebackers, of course, uh, are set up in the river defense to uh, funnel most of the runs into their arms, and uh, they do an awfully good job of reacting to the ball. And remember, Jim Sherrill playing middle linebacker in this game tonight. Jared Kinsinger down at the right defensive end spot because of the fact Brett Rohrbar is out tonight. Receiver right, Gardner and Reed in the backfield. Those are two good tailbacks. A long count for Heinrich who still looks over that 43 defense. Finally a snap, but first a flag, and they took way too much time. Yeah, well, I think that their uh, right offensive tackle jump, they okay. just a little back there in place, and the uh, Great Bend Panthers are backing up now. Were they trying to draw the Redskins offsides that time? I have no idea, but it did take an eternity before they snapped the ball. 
That'll knock them back behind the original line of scrimmage, second and 11 for the Panthers from their own 19 now. Seven to nothing, Redskins. Lamar Chapman, virtually untouched, went around right in for a 45-yard touchdown score. His seventh rushing touchdown of the season. Chapman en route to what probably well, will be an all-state campaign, you have to think. Wide right is Corey Roberts. Again, Reed and Gardner in the backfield. Heinrich wants to throw. Now rolling to his right, steps up in the pocket and drills Corey Roberts with the pass. He spins away from the defensive back, Lamar Chapman, and gets close to a first down. Well, Lamar had him covered pretty well when he first came out uh, into the flat, but he uh, kept running his roots, spun around, found some open field over there. Lamar released him to the cornerback, and at that point, Heinrich released the ball and hit Corey Roberts. Uh, Roberts uh, was hit immediately by Lamar Chapman. Really, he uh, came up very close to the first down, but a little bit short. They needed 11 yards. The pass play went for 10 and a half. Roberts' 13th catch of the season, so third and under a yard. Sprinting out to the left side is Dustin Brown, but look for a running play here. Double tight end set. Heinrich under center will give it to one man, and they take it up the middle. I don't know I don't what happened. I think so. Oh. Who did the give go to? They had all sorts of men running this way and that, and it was to Gardner. I think it was Ryan Gardner who got the ball, but he uh, actually yeah. lost about a yard. So again, a great job by the liberal defensive front, keeping the Panthers from getting the first down only and they only needed about the half a yard at the most. Well, the uh, liberal defensive line is getting such a great surge. They're, they're smaller, but they're so much quicker than that huge great end line. Now they're three trading back in the back. Fourth and one, Williams to punt. He gets it away, low, spinning. Aguilar again at the 40. Takes it down the near hash, runs into a man at the 45, gets shoved back to perhaps the 43. That was almost a carbon copy of the last punt from Bobby Williams in terms of the result. He got knocked down by Brian Streiner, an outside linebacker. And this time the Redskins will take over at their own 43 instead of their own 44 like last possession. Well, Redskins coach Gary Cornelson has talked all week about the uh, great special teams that Great Ben has. And they are doing an excellent job on the punt return coverage. So two punts for Great Ben. Let's see what the Redskins do now on offense in their second possession. Chapman gives to Montoya Alsip around the right tackle. He spins over the 45 and whipping him to the turf that time for Great Ben was Trevor Campbell, a returning starter at a defensive tackle spot. You know, 6'1", 250 pounds, uh, that's not much of a, uh, a contest when Montoya Alsop and uh, Campbell get together. And Montoya, of course, only weighs about 135 pounds uh, if he's off in the rim. Montoya with 472 yards this season rushing, six touchdowns. Last week, he snuck up on everybody, had 75 yards against Garden City. In the slot right, Eric Love. Chapman again gives to Alsop, this time to the left side of the line. He bangs off a couple of guys. Bobby Williams helps to drag him down from behind, close to midfield. Well, spotted at the 49-yard line, so a gain of two or three, and it's third and four for the Redskins. The Liberal Redskins are trying to take advantage of the quick reaction time of Bobby Williams. They started to the right, cut back to the left on that counter play at the middle. Actually, Bobby Williams had to lunge to get a hand on him. Hensley is a wide receiver to the right. And I back formation. Hensinger takes it up the middle and he bursts past the 45 to the 40 over the 35 and down close to the 30 on a big gainer up the middle for Jared Kensinger. Pat Jones and Aaron Sawyer drug him down, but uh, Kensinger, a quick hitter, uh, picked up very positive yardage there, about 25 yards. So Kensinger, one of his bigger carries on the season, Jared coming in with 127 yards rushing on the year, makes it first and 10 Redskins, down to the Panther 32. Chapman, again, hands off to Kensinger, this time not much as he barrels over the right side of the line, and the fullback probably gains a couple of yards. A strange-looking play, Josh. It looked to me like somebody might have jumped offside. There was uh, all kinds of motion, but there's no flags there. Kensinger last week got quite a few carries at the tail end of the game when the Redskins were hoping to uh, just keep a hold of the football. Kinsinger gets those hands wrapped around the ball, and there's just about no chance you're going to strip it free. 3.45, the clock ticking in the first quarter. It is 7 to nothing, Liberal. They scored on the 45-yard touchdown run from Lamar Chapman. Brian Omi is wide to the right. He caught four passes last week. Fake handoff, and Chapman rolling to the right. This is the same play he scored a touchdown on. He's to the 20, the 10, at the 5. He bounces off a man, and a touchdown! 
the same exact play that Chapman scored a 45-yard TD on works again, this time from a little bit closer in. Let's call it a 31-yard TD run this time for Chapman. Aguilar will try the point after. Hensley will hold. Chapman has a couple of rushers and a couple of big ones. Aguilar's kick is high and perfect. 14-0, three and a half minutes to go in the first quarter, and the Redskins are on top of the Panthers. You're listening. <coughs> oh, a high hanging kick by Aguilar that lands in the end zone. Looked like an NFL kicker booting that away. And another touchback, the second in a row off the leg of Phil Aguilar. 14-0, the Redskins on top. They've amassed 112 yards all on the ground thus far here in the first quarter. Lamar Chapman with 83 of them himself. Well, I believe we know that one play will work against the Redskins Panthers, <laughs> uh, Lamar Chapman has uh, sprung that play around right in and has gone in just absolutely almost untouched. Receiver to the right, Henrik, hines off to Ryan Gardner up the middle, and there is nothing there for him. Completely surrounding him in the likes of Roger Hoffman and Bobby Wilson. And he snuffed out that play after just a yard game. Well, I think Great Band is going to have to pass if they're going to have any success against the Liberal Redskins. Uh, early on, uh, it seems like the Redskins are really taking it to the uh, Great Band Panthers on the line. Uh, the Redskins are in a hurry-up offense when they got the ball. Uh, even on their kickoffs, they just can't wait to get the ball back in play and trying to wear these Great Band Panthers down. Delp and Brown, the receivers, and now Heinrich will throw. He steps up in the pocket, aims for Delp, but overthrows him as Chapman had him blanketed on the near side. Yeah, if that had been a, a, a good throw, uh, you would have seen the Mark Chapman intercept the ball, and uh, he only had about uh, 25 yards to cover to get into the end zone. Third and nine, the football is at the Panther 21. It's interesting that Coach Gary Cornelson was talking about how great men this season hadn't really given up big plays. But two big plays have yielded two liberal Redskins touchdowns. It is 14 to nothing. Brown sprints out to the left, and Corey Roberts, who caught a pass earlier in the game, is a receiver to the right. Heinrich under center, Williams a tight end to the right. Back to throw Heinrich, throws a screen pass out to Marcus Reed. He catches it on the far hash of the 25, bounces off some guys down to the 30, and he is right at that first down marker. He just flipped that screen pass out there, got it between the line and the linebackers, and Reed was able to scurry ahead for a first down, just his second catch of the year. Well, I think Bobby Wilson and Kevin Hammond both uh, came in to sandwich him, but it was after he uh, he picked up the first down on that middle screen. Terry Delp runs in the screen from the Great Bend sideline. Coach Randy Hubert is in his fourth year at the helm of the Panthers. He came to the WAC conference the same year Coach Gary Cornelson did, but their paths have gone in different directions since then. Bobby Williams is a receiver now. There are three out there for Jason Heinrich. Two men in the backfield on first and 10 from the 31. Heinrich will throw a short drop back. Darts a pass over the middle and a big hit applied to Dustin Brown, who can't hang on. Nailing him there was Kevin Hammond. Yes, that was Kevin oh, Hammond. Man. That was a shot. He was on him immediately. The ball was up in the air. Uh, he had to jump up to grab it, and Kevin Hammond came through. And got him like a, uh, like a knife going through hot butter. Dustin Brown. Hadn't played football since his freshman year. I can see why. <laughs> That's the kind of hit that makes you wish you hadn't come back out for football. It's second and 10. Again, a three receiver setup. Brown, Roberts, and Williams. Heinrich, though, gives the football to Ryan Gardner, who tries to back forward. And there's not much there over the right side of his line. Bobby Williams is in on the tackle again for the Redskins. Give Gardner three yards on the play, third and seven coming up. The football is just shy of the Panther 34-yard line. We have under two minutes to go in the first quarter. We talked about Coach Randy Hubert heading in a different direction than Gary Cornelson. In his fourth year, Hubert's overall record is 6-26. and In Cornelson's fourth year, his record is 35-6. and A receiver to the right, double tight end setup. Heinrich backpedals, now rolls to his right, wants to throw, flips it out on the near side, and the pass is caught. 
at the 43 on a lunge by Terry Delft. That was a terrific catch and a first down for Great Bend. Terry Delft did make a nice catch and that ball was thrown in the only position it could be thrown to have a reception but not an interception. The Liberal Redskins really had that play pretty well, uh, pretty well defense. But uh, it uh, was again another first down. Heinrich looks as if he has a pretty good throwing arm. His passes are spiraling nicely over the middle. He's been off target a couple of times, but he's also made a couple of nice throws. And I have figured out that they're going to have to roll him out and move that pocket in order to evade the uh, liberal right. Another two tight end setup with the receiver way wide to the left. The football will be snapped from the near hash. Give up the middle to Ryan Gardner. He shows some good leg surge as he powers his way over the 50 and into Redskin territory. This game will go for eight or nine yards close to the first down marker, which is at the liberal 46. I think Roger Hoffman getting up from the bottom of the pile again with help from Philip Aguilar. <coughs> That's a nine-yard carry for Gardner, a three-year starter, a tailback. There's not really one fullback or one halfback in this great men lineup. They'll have Gardner and Reed set up in the backfield side by side, and they'll go to either one of them. Gardner second on the team in rushing coming into tonight's game, but I think he has enough uh, yardage thus far tonight to take over that lead from Reed. Heinrich trying to option it to the right. He's going to keep the ball and get a first down, taking it in front of the Great Bend bench. He lunged past the 45 and gets dropped at the 44 with Kevin Hammond and Bobby Wilson covering him. We had uh, Hoffman in there, Lamar Chapman was in there, everybody was in there, but it was after he picked up a couple yards in the first down. So it's first and 10. Great Bend having a pretty good possession. They took over this time on their 20 after the ball kicked into the end zone. Eight seconds on the first quarter clock, and Great Bend won't get off another play before the end of the quarter. And that's that. 14 to nothing, the Redskins. Heinrich to throw under a little bit of pressure. Lost one over the middle, but it's just overthrown. He wanted Brian Walter, and Philip Aguilar, last week's Southwest Daily Times Defensive Player of the Week, was there to put on a big hit. Boy, that was a hit to Philip Aguilar. <laughs> Perfect timing. The ball hit, uh, it hit the hands. Philip Aguilar hit the receiver. And the ball and the receiver and Philip all found to the ground at about the 25 yard line. I guess Coach Randy Hubert says the two guys in the Redskins that scare him most are Lamar Chapman. And that's come to fruition after one quarter with Chapman a couple of big TD runs. And Phil Aguilar is the other one. 43. Second and 10, spinning around is Heinrich. He pitches back to Gardner. He's trying to get around left end, but the Redskins have this play covered greatly. Zarek Freeman whipped him to the turf, and over in the area also was Kevin Hammond. But the fellow that made that play was Bobby Wilson. He had to sack to his credit tonight in the first great bend possession of the ball game. Heinrich wants to throw. Backpedaling, flips it out in the flat to the right side to Ryan Gardner. Two men in the air and they drop him quickly. He maybe gained a couple of yards, but there was nothing there for him as Chad Adams was all over Ryan Gardner. That's right, big Chad Adams. Uh, only a sophomore, but at 6'2, 185, I'm sure he's going to figure prominently in the Gary Cornelson's future plans. So after things looked a little bit promising for a great bend, the Redskins turn up that defense intensity and it's fourth and nine. The punt team out there for the third time in the game for Great Bend. Bobby Wilson has gotten off a couple of pretty good punts thus far. And the track star who garnered first place finishes in three different events last year in the 5A meet will boot it from the 44. It's an end over end kick. Aguilar lets it go over his head and into the end zone. And a touchback. The Redskins will have their worst field position of the game. Last week, it's been the Lamar Chapman show for Liberal. Well, this is going to test the medal with the Liberal Redskins a little bit here, Josh. And they're 80 yards away from Pay Dirt. They're going into a uh, fairly stiff North three, and uh, they're going to have to grind it out a little bit. Brian Omi is a receiver to the right, a handoff to Kinsinger up the middle, battling ahead for yardage, and he'll be knocked down after about a four-yard pickup. Tonight, it's been nothing but the senior playing fullback for Liberal. Well, I suspect that that uh, fumble up at Garden City uh, probably uh, helped tip the uh, scales back into the guy uh, to uh, Jared Kinsinger. Kinsley is a wide receiver. Love in the slot right option to Chapman. He's going to keep the ball. Oh, he goes upfield between the hashes past the 30, tripped up at the 35, and he stumbles ahead to the 37. <laughs> what a play by Lamar Chapman. He turned on a dime, taking that between the hash marks for a first down carry. 
So that is such an effective play when you go out there and you plant that right foot and cut back against the brain of field. Uh, unfortunately, Lamar kind of stumbled or he would have had some huge yardage. Great band really never did tackle him. I think the uh, of grass got him. There's Steve Calhoun at fullback. Montoya Alsop, the up man behind him. Calhoun takes the football and gets zip up the middle. Steve Dim had a fumble last week against Garden City, that 17 to 16 win. And he gains a yard there, getting it a little bit of this week for Liberal. Brett Rohrbaugh out. And the Redskins won't play him unless they absolutely have to. Right now, it looks like they won't have to. Chapman on an option. Pitches back to Alsop. Lots of room on the left side. Up to midfield. He backpedals into Great Bend territory to the 48. And a gain of about 15 yards for the Redskins halfback. His most impressive by Schreiner as a linebacker now. Hand off to the fullback Calhoun. He goes up the middle and gets nailed. Driven backwards, Bobby Williams spun into the turf. Fake handoff, Chapman to throw. Under pressure from Reed, he gets knocked backwards, but Chapman still has it. Taking it down the right sideline now, he's going to be forced out of bounds. And a late flag, it looked like, thrown by an official on the near side in front of the Panther bench. I think that may have just been in the bag okay. uh, where he was marking where Lamar went out of bounds. All righty, that's good news then. I guess, well, I was thinking maybe a, a late hit on the part of Great Ben, but no, he's forced out for a loss of three yards, and it's third and 11 space. Yeah, we did knock him backwards about five yards, but he uh, never did wrap him up, and Lamar has such great balance, of course, and kept his feet on the and uh, came back upfield. So probably uh, could have thrown it downfield uh, just out of bounds to uh, reverse the loss, but he thought he could uh, gain a little bit coming down that right side. Third and 13, 14, zip Redskins. Two receivers now in what is a passing situation. Football at the liberal 49. Chapman to throw, looking right side. Under pressure from Simonson. Throws it down the sidelines and off the fingertips of Eric Love, who leaped at the 40, but under coverage from Pat Jones, just could not quite get high enough in the air to pull it down. And Liberal's going to have to punt for the first time tonight in three possessions. Well, still a pretty good offensive uh, thrust by the Redskins that time movement from their 20 out to uh, actually across the 50, although it's only up to about the 48 now. And they'll have to kick it down the field to break down the end of their field. Great down, probably will get some pretty good field position. Marcus Reed backpedals to his own 20-yard line, and now a timeout for the Redskins. We'll keep it here so we don't miss the punt with 7.56 to play in the half. Well, with all of those changes that you mentioned earlier in the show, uh, Josh, the Redskins were a little bit confused on who was on the punt team at that time. This is the first time that they've had the punt, and they were a man short. The City Chiefs of the WAC Conference with those great special teams. Last year, Corey Roberts blocked five kicks by himself. In his own 37 or so, once he approaches the ball, Reed wants to receive it at about his own 20. High snap, but Aguilar snares it. The kick is away, spiraling back to the 18. That's where Reed takes on the near hash, and he gets hit almost immediately by Eric Love and Zarek Freeman. A good special teams coverage as Aguilar hung the ball in the air. Now, Reed thought he had a couple of yards that he could get on uh, Freeman, and, uh, or, yeah, Freeman, or he uh, absolutely had no leverage at all on either sideline because he uh, had Freeman on one side, Love on the other, and they just sandwiched him right where he caught the ball. Football is on the near hash mark at the 20-yard line. The Redskins with that line of Bobby Wilson, Jared Kinsinger, Steve Calhoun, and Chad Adams. Under center, Jason Heinrich. A handoff to Marcus Reed. Going up the middle, past the 25, number 27, Roger Hoffman helped apply the hit to stop him, and Kevin Hammond was also in on the play. Reed with some uh, good movement up the middle that time. Gained a uh, little bit over seven yards. Second and two and a half for Great Bend. Well, Great Bend this year, instead of coming out of the starting block fast, comes out slow, but they seem to be gaining more. They had a pretty good possession in their last try. Wound up punting, though. Two men in the backfield, Gardner and Reed. Heinrich taking his time with the snap count. Spins around and gives to Marcus Reed. A counter play to the right side. He'll have a first down. Lunging over the 30 and down to the 32-yard line. Early on, Gardner was getting the call all the time on offense. Now they're handing the ball off to Reed most of the time. Uh, Gardner was having a tough time uh, getting the penetration. 
position that we do. Uh, I, I don't know what the, the difference between the two are. They both have great speed, and it looks like they're calling basically the same play. It's just that uh, Reed's having a little, bit, a little bit better success. Scoreboard clock in motion. Six and a half minutes to go before we break. Coming up at halftime, we'll visit with Seward County Community College Saints men's basketball coach Dale Reed. He could have an exciting season in store here in Liberal. In motion, Corey Roberts from right to left. First and 10, and a handoff goes to Marcus Reed. Tries to take it down the near hash, but he was hit at the line of scrimmage. Did gain a couple of yards, but Bobby Wilson had him around the ankles, and Robbie Lanning was also there to help force down the halfback. After a gain of three yards, it is second and seven. Well, they went to the well one too many times that time, Josh, so they keep running a play until Liberal is able to defense it, and uh, defense it we did. The football is right at the 35-yard line. The Redskins scored a couple of first-quarter TDs on runs from Lamar Chapman, each of them over 30 yards. Receiver to the right, two men in the backfield with a double tight end set. Liberal takes a blitz, a handoff, again comes the read, this time trying to take it between the hash marks, and once more, he just doesn't get a lot of yards. Maybe a yard and a half. It is about third and five now, as Reed took it right up the middle. Goes over one guard slot one time and tries the other side of the line the next. Corey Roberts is a receiver wide right. Heinrich with third and five, spins around, now takes it up the middle on a draw play. He'll have a first down to the 45 and down to the 48. Was that a design play or was it busted and Heinrich just had lived the rest? Well, I think it was designed, Josh, so he had a couple of takes that he carried out. Bobby Wilson uh, hit his left hand on him at about the 40-yard line, which would have, of course, uh, been short of the first down. Heinrich spun out of the, uh, the grasp of Bobby Wilson uh, and took off downfield, picked up the first down, and they uh, just about up to midfield down, about the 47 yard line. Three receivers now. Heinrich might want to throw the football. The Redskins... Loading up with their defensive back, short drop, a throw to the near side, the ball is dropped by Dustin Brown. He was hit almost as soon as the ball was arriving in his jersey by Kevin Hammond. Yeah, yeah Kevin had it well covered. It uh, was just a couple of steps downfield, turn and look for the ball, and the ball and Kevin Hammond arrived at the same time, and that uh, meant for a, uh, a drop ball by Dustin Brown. You know, Kevin Hammond, just looking at him, you wouldn't think he's going to deliver a big hit. But he's uh, provided a couple of big blows tonight. Well, he's not very heavy, but uh, he does have that great speed. Yeah. And, uh, when you have that much speed coming behind you, it doesn't matter what the way it is, that's a pretty good hit. Like getting hit by a bullet. Split receivers, Heinrich again a short drop. This time throws to the right. He wanted Bobby Williams, but Williams wasn't ready for the pass. He uh, was looking the wrong way. Uh, never really did look for the ball. The ball was uh, behind him and was bouncing downfield before he turned around to look for it. Yeah, Williams had the line. Bobby Williams is on the left as a tight end. Terry Delp is a receiver to the short side of the field. That's the left. Now he goes in motion the other way. Third and ten, Heinrich will hand it off to Ryan Gardner, taking it outside into Redskin territory. He's at the 45, legs are still moving past the 45. He's finally dropped it, maybe the 44, and that was an impressive run by Gardner. Yeah, he hit the line awfully quick that time. He's still going to be about a yard short, I think, Josh, and they're going to have to make a decision right now that they've been Panthers are. Do they want to pick up uh, what appears to be now about a yard and a half, uh, go for it on fourth down, or do they want to pump the ball away so far? Oh, it looks as if they're going to go for it. That was a great run, run mode, mode by Gardner, who could have been tackled just almost as soon as he crossed the line of scrimmage. So the Panther fans are on their feet as the Panthers are going to go for it. A yard to go on fourth down. Reed and Gardner in the backfield, and the handoff comes to Marcus Reed. No, Ryan Gardner, and I think he did get the first down. Yeah, second effort, uh, I believe. Uh, well, Great Ben didn't think they got the first down there. They had defensive guys jogging out onto the field. They're going to measure, obviously. Uh -huh. uh, the team is quite sure what's going on. Uh, we'll see where this spot ends up. It, it looks to me like he might be a little bit short, too. Now, Kevin Hammond of the Redskins was signaling that it's going to be Redskin football. They'll stretch those chains, and they're going to be shy of the first down. That brings a pump of the fist from Lamar Chapman, shy by about 8 or 10 inches. They went for it fourth and one and just couldn't quite get enough. Well, the Redskins have good field position in what might be their last possession of the half, 3.39 to go. Great bend out on downs. The football is at the liberal 43. 
much for the red, liberal Redskins to uh, try to get this ball into the end zone again, Josh. Uh, this is where they traditionally make one last final choice right before half time and they're in good field position. Almy is a receiver to the right. Chapman back to throw, has a couple of options. He throws to Eric Love, who has the ball go through his fingertips as he leaped in the air and tried to haul it in with his back to Lamar Chapman at the 50-yard line. Aaron Sawyer on the cover behind the, the ball was just a little bit overthrown. It, uh, it could have been catchable, but it would have been a fantastic catch if Eric Love would have come down there. I've seen Eric make one great catch this season. That was at Colby when he went high in the air to reel one in from about 25 yards out. Love on the season with three pass receptions for 52 yards. Three men in the backfield. No receivers on a double tight end set. A fake reverse. Chapman up the middle. Heads towards midfield, but he'll be short of it. No, no, he kept going. The ball sprung loose, and Great Ben may have recovered. The ball got knocked loose near midfield and then rolled into Panther territory. Great Ben has it. Panthers come up with the football. The man who recovered it was Aaron Sawyer, who was covering Eric Lowe on the previous play. Well, Chapman fumbled it on a design to keep a play up the middle. Right bar and knocked it ahead, and Sawyer recovered. So great men's football with the clock ticking. Right about three minutes to go in the half. A receiver to the left, double men in the backfield. Hand off up the middle, Ryan Gardner, who buried ahead. Boy, he had great acceleration right through the middle of that line, and he'll be close to a first down again. He took it into Redskin territory to the 45, just about uh, half a yard short. Well, it is, uh, it's kind of different the way they alternate these backs, uh, Josh. They don't go one play to one and one to the other. It's either Marcus Reed for the drive. Uh, this appears to be Ryan Gardner's drive, and as the last one was. They just uh, use one back and one back and one back, but the other guy blocked for him, I guess. 14 to nothing, Liberal Redskins on top. A marching band circling around the track here at Redskin Field for their halftime show. The Queens to be crowned at halftime. Fake handoff. Heinrich on play action. Sheds a man in the backfield. Now throws down the right sideline. The pass is caught by Bobby Williams. A first down at the 30-yard line. Williams with his fourth catch of the season. But Heinrich made a great play to avoid a would-be sacker in the backfield. Both of them had it in their sights, and they were in hot pursuit. He managed to evade uh, Kinsey pulled up, fired the ball downfield, and uh, Bobby Williams caught it to Roger Hoffman, tracked him down, and uh, dropped him after just a short game, and uh, after he caught the reception, but it's still a first down. 15-yard pickup, option to the right, picks back to Marcus Reed, a spin move, past one man, and he lunges ahead to the 25. Well, that was an impressive move by Marcus Reed. Yeah, Reed did uh, plant that foot, spin completely around, and uh, come down for about 10 more yards before he hit the ground. A six-yard pickup and a timeout on the field for the Redskins to talk things over. Again, we'll keep it here, 137 to play before halftime, and Great Bend has their best field position of the game at the 20-yard line. Now, I don't remember Great Bend taking any hot, uh, timeouts this half, so they've got all three left, and they should have some good shots at scoring a touchdown here in the waning moments of the second quarter. Yeah, they've, uh, they've been able to throw effectively here at the last couple of uh, series simply because the running game is coming on track and uh, they've gotten some uh, yards on the rushing ground. Ryan Gardner and Marcus Reeder in the backfield. Troy Roberts is wide to the right. Now he's in motion to the near side. Check that, that's Dustin Brown. Movement on the right side of the line, and I think Bobby Williams a tight end moved early. There is a flag. There was movement. Yes, it was on the red screen. I think the right defensive tackle maybe was the guy who moved early. I thought I saw a guy on the right side of the Panther line move though before the snap. But anymore, if you cross that line of scrimmage, you're in trouble. <laughs> well, you either cross the line of scrimmage or even uh, make a stunt and try 
the draw the other guy off. And I think that's the call. Corey Roberts is a receiver to the left on the penalty. It's first and 10 now. Heinrich under center with a slot to the left. Double formation in the backfield and an option now the left. Pitch back to Ryan Gardner. Down the left, hash marks. He sheds a man at the 15. He's still on his feet down past the 10 and inside the five yard line. A great run by Ryan Gardner. Takes him into big time scoring position. An 18 yard pickup for Ryan Gardner. Only two and a half yards to go for the Panthers. They could get on the board and slice that Redskin lead in half heading into halftime. Terry Delp is a receiver to the right. Again, Gardner and Reed stand behind Jason Heinrich. The handoff to Gardner, leaping at the end zone. Or no, it was Marcus Reed, but he did not get in. He leaped at the line of scrimmage, but he got hit right at the line. And he really didn't gain much, if anything. I think they're going to give him about a yard. Okay. Guy, but, you know, he was not hit on by one of the linebackers. I couldn't pick up the number down there. But, uh, there was a wall of humanity, and then uh, a flying snapback trying to go over the line, and then another wall of humanity that brought him back down the ground. Under 40 seconds, that clock moving. Second and goal from the one. Heinrich, options to the left. He'll keep it himself. Bounces off a of hammer and has a touchdown. A one-yard touchdown carry for Jason Heinrich. That's his first running TD of the season. And Great Bend is on the board. They took the football 54 yards to score their first touchdown of the game with 31 seconds to go in the half. A good possession there for Great Bend, taking advantage of the Redskin turnover right at midfield. Dan Horn will try the point after. A good snap from center, and the kick is low and no good. Boy, it almost drilled an official there standing underneath the goalpost. That ball ricocheted <laughs> off the crossbar, the lower left-hand corner, and just came down like a uh, rifle shot towards the official. The pocket to the right, steps up to the 35, throws to Brian Over, he catches the ball, and great then territory at the 47, and then steps right out of bounds. A good play that goes for 19 yards and a first down for the Redskins. Terry Delp on the coverage, uh, the first time on the out, but the only was open was Mario Cameron did a nice job of delivering the football. Omi's 14th catch of the season. He had five in the opener, four last week against Dodge City. Again, three receivers set up. Kinsinger's in the slot, and from the shotgun again, Chapman takes the snap. Now rolling left. Lost one out to the far sideline, caught by Matt Hensley. He'll move out of bounds inside the 30-yard line. Another first down on a pass play for 15 yards, and again, the clock stopped with seven seconds. Actually, the official marching out at about the 34 yard line. Oh, okay. So not a real good spot from the liberal standpoint, but the official was right on the ball, so I'm sure that's good. Still a first down, though, and the clock does stop with seven seconds to go. This should be the Redskins' last chance for Liberal, their last of the half. He's three of six on the season on field goal attempts. Remember, he kicked the 52-yarder last year against Goddard. Tried a 57-yarder last week at Garden City, but that was kind of a screw moment. Matt Hensley will hold. Roger Hoffman's going to be snapping it back. Good snap from center. The kick is up. Man, that's going to be way short. End over end. It would have been on target, but it landed just a three or four yards deep in the end zone, so that was well short. Well, there's one second left to go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Legend country, 102.7. On for a week and already a legend born. Heinrich just does the menu flex routine. The Redskin flag to the pride of Southwest Kansas. That liberal band.
going out with her friends. So he says escorted tonight by her brother, Randy Thompson. Our first senior candidate tonight is J.C. Hamilton. J.C. is the daughter of Ron and Cynthia Hackey and Ken and Jana Hamilton. She participates in basketball, volleyball, honor society, and cheerleading. J.C. enjoys playing sports, jet skiing, and hanging out with her friends. Her future plans include going to college to study radiology or personal fitness. J.C. is escorted tonight by her father, Ken Hamilton. Our next senior candidate is Michelle Rago. Michelle is the daughter of George and Connie Rago. She participates in student council, chorus, honor society, and cheerleading. Michelle enjoys singing, dancing, and horseback riding. Her future plans include attending college to study business or architecture. Michelle is escorted tonight by her father, George Rago. Our finer's final senior candidate is Trisha Shandy. Trisha is the daughter of Robert and May Jean Shandy. Trisha participates in volleyball, basketball, honor society, and student council. She enjoys camping, coaching, and spending time with her friends. Her future plans include attending college to study marketing, business, or education. Trisha is escorted tonight by her father, Robert Shandy. Serving tonight as the LHS homecoming court flower girl is Jessica Croy. Jessica is in Mrs. Hall's first grade class at Lincoln Hall. Marcus Reed. Well, Marcus Reed, who was a pretty effective rusher in the first half of Great Bend, will boot it away from the 40. A high end over end kick. Alsip moves to his right, takes it up to 12. Now between the hash marks, he's at the 20. 25 up the middle, 30. At the 35, he's to the 40 before he's dropped at the 41 yard line. A great return for Alsip. Finally stopped by sophomore Sean Waibara. A good field field position for the Redskins, taking over at their own 41 to start playing the second half. Eric Love wide right, backs in the eye, and a handoff to Alsop up the middle. He's hit at the line of scrimmage, but stays on his feet and goes forward for a couple of yards. That was Trevor Campbell, who hit Alsop right at the line of scrimmage, but couldn't drop him. Alsop did a good job there staying away. Uh, Campbell did hit him uh, probably two steps deep in the backfield, but he spun away and uh, kept his balance and got up to uh, oh, just about a one yard game, I guess, at about the 42, a little bit over the 42 yard line. Montoya now is a receiver to the left. Three are out there for Chapman. He's in the shotgun, moving to his right now. He'll lock it downfield. Eric Webb is wide open, but he just had him overthrown. If Chapman leads, Love properly there. That is an easy touchdown. Lamar Chapman very close to being over the line of scrimmage when he released that ball, too. He, uh, he uh, certainly would have had a first down uh, if he would have gone ahead and rushed the ball. And, uh, had a lot of open fields, but uh, like you mentioned, Eric Love was absolutely wide open. Uh, not even a too far. Love must have been 10 yards behind the nearest defensive back. Brian Ovi is a receiver to the right on third and nine. The Redskins probably will be throwing again. Two other receivers are out there, too. Again, the pocket moves to the right. This time, Chapman will keep it to the 45. He's uh, collared around the, the shoulder pad area and dropped to the 49. So he'll be shy of the first down. He needed to get to the Panther 49. He was tackled at his own 49. Uh, he's just uh, about a football short of the 50 yard line. And, uh, again, this was uh, not unusual for Barry Cornelson to go for a play like this, but it looks like the punch in the other line. Great Ben has been doing a good job of holding the Redskins since those first two possessions. So Zarek Kramer's out there to long snap it back to Phil Aguilar, who punted once in the first half. The deep man is Ryan Gardner, the team's leading rusher in the first half, and a high kick, a good punt. Gardner back, takes it at the 15, heads to the far sideline, but gets tripped up almost immediately. I think Mershik Wiltshire got it. No, Zarek Freeman. It was Zarek Freeman, the long snapper. And Zarek has been a terrific special teams player all season for Liberal. 
And again, he's not a very big guy, 5'10", 150 pounds is what he's worth. <laughs> he just barely got a hand on uh, uh, Ryan Gardner uh, and then knocked him down uh, with this uh, left on the shoulder. Grapevins uh, football at their own 15. Jason Heinrich is the quarterback. He was 6 of 12 throwing in the first half for 54 yards. He will hand it off to Ryan Gardner, counterplay around the left guard area. And he doesn't get much, maybe a couple as he picks his way forward. Gardner with 58 yards rushing in the first half. Well, he uh, starts off the uh, second half, just like he starts off the first half. Uh, the first half, he started the uh, playoff with about a three-yard loss. This time, he picks up about a foot, but uh, still the level Redskins had him uh, very well defend. Redskins defensive line, Wilson on one end, Kinsinger on the other, Steen and Calhoun are the tackles. Hoffman, Cheryl, and Lanning are the linebackers. Third and nine. And a handoff to Ryan Gardner again. He powers his way forward. Good line surge that time for the Panthers, but not a whole lot of room for Gardner to maneuver, and he picked up about four. Third and five and a half or six yards for the Panthers. Well, resting right on the 20 yard line. <laughs> Certainly a long six yards to have any hope of keeping this drive alive. Chapman at a cornerback. Kevin Hammond the other corner. Aguilar and Freeman are the safeties. Roberts and Brown are split out wide. Third and five. Heinrich to throw. Rolling to the right. And the ball's batted down as he tried to pass it over the middle. In his face was Matt Steen. He had the cornerback Heinrich around the waist as Jason was unloading the pass. So that's incomplete, and the punt team is out there for Great Bend. Well, good job uh, for both of the defenses on the first series of down, stopping the other team. And uh, the Liberal Redskins are probably going to get this ball in pretty good field position. Although the ball, or the uh, wind has died down, and the ball will not be uh, held up by the wind on this possession. Bobby Williams will kick it. He's the returning all whack hunter. Good snap from center. Lots of protection. A low spiraling kick. Aguilar retreats to the 43, takes it. Across midfield, oh, a big block. Aguilar to the 45, and then he's nailed at the 44-yard line. Who was the guy who put that big block on? Back here, was that Montoya Alsa? Montoya Alsa, yeah. one of the little guys out there delivered the big hit. He, he grilled Justin Pike. That was a great block by Alsa, who's not used to delivering the hits. I think these games are being televised on Tuesday nights, and uh, the fans out there will certainly want to watch this uh, hit that Montoya also played. Redskins with it on the Panther 44, first and 10. Fake handoff, now Chapman around the right end. This is the play scored two touchdowns on, but he won't get out of the grasp of Bobby Williams. Now you can see why he's, he's a Division I uh, candidate. Has a uh, defensive end, he grabbed Chapman around the neck area and jerked into the turf. Bobby Williams switch ends there. Uh, he was the right defensive end, and it looked to me like he was over on the left side that time to uh, bring Lamar down. Uh, if so, that would be one of the strategic moves that the Bay Bend Panthers made at halftime, uh, not wanting Lamar to run around that end again. He just picks up three yards on a play that got him tons of yardage in the first half. I guess he's lining up at right end. That was just a terrific play. Shotgun formation for Chapman. He's going to keep it running to the 40-yard line up the middle now, 35, and he'll have the first down, I do believe. Trevor Campbell, a tackle, got him around the shins and tripped him up. On that last play, Campbell looked as if he was hurting. He shed his helmet really quickly, and they sent him in on the field to replace him. But then uh, Campbell wound up staying in there, and he tackled Chapman. They'll bring out the chains to see if Lamar got enough for a first down. Well, Lamar is so elusive out there, uh, shifting his way from one foot to another and uh, comes downfield. It looks to me like he's just going to be uh, a little pressure in his face. Yeah, it's that. <laughs> Third down coming up for the Redskins. Brian Omi trots into the lineup, gives the play to Chapman. And look for the Redskins to take it up the middle to Jerry Kinsinger. Maybe. Nope, Chapman sneaks ahead himself. He'll easily have it. He only needed to get maybe six inches. And following his center, Robbie Lanning, Chapman picks up the yardage he needed. The football is inside the 35 now. 
get a red skin, so if you come up to line of pounds, Lamar kind of surveys the area, and the minute he gets underneath his center uh, landing, Robby landing, a uh, resurgence forward, and he uh, has the first down there easily by the yard. 7-18 to go in the third quarter, 14-6, handoff to Alsip. And the Redskins with the lead, give it to their halfback who backpedals forward. A modest gain of three yards, close to the 30. Alsip in the first half carried for 21 yards on four attempts. Yeah, the, uh, in the statistics are kind of misleading because uh, Alsip <coughs> didn't have very many carries. But you'll remember the reason he didn't have very many carries was uh, Lamar Chapman broke those two long runs so that nobody had very many carries. Strong side right. Chapman on an option play will keep it. He'll move down to the 20 on the right side. and Well, not quite to the 20. He's over the 25 and... Again, close to a first down. I expect the chains to maybe come out again. It looks like the ball is just uh, maybe a little bit shy of the 23. First down. The Redskins get it. They're marching downfield. They took over at the Great Men 44 on the punt from Bobby Williams. And now the football is at the 23 of the Panthers. Liberal up by eight points. Eric Love is a wide receiver to the left. Brian Omi to the short side of the field, the right. Ken Singer and Albert Alsip in the backfield. Hand up Montoya. He got nailed at the line of scrimmage. Got hit sideways, and actually the hit, I think, forced him uh, forward a couple more yards. I don't know who put that hit on him, but Montoya just got nailed laterally. Well, he was squeezed by both of the uh, defensive ends, and of course, uh, Bobby Williams has the big game down there for the Great Bend Panthers. Uh, he did uh, lunge forward for a short game, uh, picked up a couple of yards, but he was hit immediately when he got to the line. Montoya is a tough guy, though. We've seen him take some big hits this year, and Coach Cornelson says that he loves Montoya because last year he was kind of a guinea pig going up against the varsity defense. Pitch back to Alsip, left side he goes, he'll take it past the 20, and then he gets ripped to the turf, and there's a flag on the play as Josh Simonson tackled him at about the 20-yard line. He might have a face mask here. No, they're saying this is against the Redskins. Yeah. 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 It's been a relatively penalty-free game. They are marching it way backfield. <laughs> All the way back to the 38. Well, the Redskins, I recall, got called for an offsides in the first half. Is this the only other penalty of the game? Seems that way. Second and forever for the Redskins. Two receivers. And Chapman to throw, gets hit in the backfield. He unleashes a pass that's incomplete, and he was in the grasp of Terry Delk when he threw that pass over in the right flat. He wanted Kinsinger, but Chapman was just unloading it so he wouldn't be sacked. Well, that was an amazing feat of uh, strength there by Lamar Chapman because he was in the grasp of Delk, and he managed to uh, hold that arm up to get it free of Delk what do they need third and what 25 30 24 i guess they're saying on the scoreboard so that sounds good enough for me brian omi is a receiver to the right side of the field that's the strong side fake handoff now chapman rolling to the right being pressured lost it downfield for brian omi but it's overthrown Delp on the coverage as omi couldn't catch up to the ball, which fell down incomplete at right about the goal line. Oh, on a possession that looked very promising at first, a costly 15-yard holding penalty really fouls things up, and now the Redskins must hunt. Yeah, that was just a uh, rally killer there. Uh, the, the Redskins were moving into position, and uh, certainly sort of back there, could have kicked a field goal, and now he's lining up for another one. Uh, that would be about a 55-yard field goal. 55-yarder come up, his career high 52. He missed a 51-yarder in the first half. He was way short. Here it comes. It's high, spinning. It might be long enough, and it's no good. Just, just short. Oh, man. That was close. Well, I don't know. I, I sure thought that was right down the middle of the field. It must have just stuck underneath the crossbar. That was absolutely a great hit. Man. Would have been a 55-yarder. 
I haven't heard of a young, longer one this year in Kansas, but Aguilar just did barely, barely miss it. Raven takes over at their own 37. There is no scoring thus far in the second half, 14 to six liberal, and a timeout on the field called by the Redskins with far enough into it, we'll have to keep it right here. Well, Coach Derek Carnelson is uh, wanting to talk to the officials over there. I think he too thinks that uh, field goal was good. Uh, the uh, the rose to the right hash, throws it in the flat ball, caught by Corey Roberts, he'll have a first down in midfield, and better than that, out of the Redskin 47. A gain of 15 yards for Jason Heinrich and his Great Bend Panthers on the seventh completed pass of the ball game for the senior quarterback. Sorry, Freeman coming in there to make the tackle uh, after Roberts banged off of about three other liberal Redskins, but uh, unfortunately, Zerk didn't get there in time to ring him down before he took off that first game. Delp sprints out to the left. He's the lone receiver. Marcus Reed and Ryan Gardner stand side by side in the backfield. Two tight ends, Williams and Walters. A long snap count and a handoff to Ryan Gardner. Tries to go to the right tackle, and there's nothing there for him. Maybe just a yard gain. Yeah, just a yard gain. Roger Hoffman. Oh, Robbie Lanning gets off the bottom of the pile. Talking to Coach Terry Witherspoon before the game, he says Robbie Lanning might have the best pair of hands of anybody on the Redskins team. He's what a catcher in depth. Now back over the middle of that 43 defense. He is 14 to 6. Liberal leads on homecoming nights with the clock ticking. Three and a half minutes to play third quarter. On an option play, Heinrich gets snuffed out at the line of scrimmage. Maybe picked up a yard. Jared Kensinger at defensive end, tackled him, and also Steve Calhoun. Calhoun has such leg strength. He squats over 500 pounds that as a defensive tackle, he can really drive off that ground and burst into the backfield if you're not a very alert offensive lineman. Two men in the backfield, third and 13. The ball resting just shy of midfield. Heinrich to throw. Kinsinger applies some pressure. He lost it downfield and just incomplete is the pass. Corey Roberts, field Aguilar will let it bounce inside the 20 and it'll be down at the 17 or 18 yard line. Well, the Redskins pin back there inside the... Receivers are split left and right. Backs are in the eye. A give to Jared Kinsinger up the middle, and the fullback barrels ahead. Still keeping those legs turning up near the 26 yards. Still not quite up to the 20. It's at the 19-yard line. are the split receivers. A handoff again to Kinsinger. He'll have a first down. Moving those legs ahead and diving over the 25. Both times, Lamar Chapman on long runs took it all the way. A 45-yard scamper and a 30-yard run. Option right, and Chapman keeps it. He has a big gainer now over the 35, not forward to the 40. And Chapman will have a first down on a carry, taking him 13 yards to the right side of the field. Gets to the 41 yard line. Here's the snap from center. This time in the option, he'll give it to Kinsinger. Bouncing off tacklers up to midfield. There's a loose ball. The Panthers say they got it. Let's see. There was a fumble given to the Panthers in the first half. Lamar Chapman gave that one up, and the Panthers get another one. Kinsinger carried the ball almost 10 yards up the middle. Blitz from the right corner. Now in motion goes the man, Corey Roberts. Hand up to Marcus Rady. He's pinballing around on the left hash mark. And he'll get into Redskin territory in a six-yard gain to the 45. 12 seconds to go before we reach the final 12 minutes of this one. And I believe they just uh, had their last play of the third quarter. Clock ticking, 2-1, and that is the Redskins football on KSCB. Now then, as Bob just mentioned a while ago, 
This fumble gives the Panthers the football in the same type of position as the prior liberal fumble. So the Panthers are hoping that history repeats itself here in this possession starting off the fourth quarter. Second and five, a receiver to the left for Jason Heinrich, who now goes from right to left. The Redskins with a six-man defensive front in motion, a man, and the right tackle move. Jumping off sides for the, it was Scott Schmidt, right, the right tackle who jumped for the Panthers, and that will help out the Redskins' cause. Well, again, the line goes to that long play count every once in a while. I don't know whether he's checking off or whether he just has a long count, and uh, both the liberal Redskins and uh, his offensive line are getting impatient, but uh, fortunately, his offensive line track is the liberal Redskins. Well, tonight's game is a tune-up for district competition, which starts next week. Great Ben will play a home game against McPherson. The Redskins on senior recognition night face Bishop Carroll. Need a win heading into that. Back to throw Heinrich. Out of the pocket to his right on second and 10. Throws it downfield. Caught by Roberts on a leap. This is awfully close to a first down. He needed to get to the 41. And I believe he's just a little bit short. I would imagine they're going to have to measure this. Yep. Probably caught it uh, very close to the first down, but his momentum was driven backwards. Lamar Chapman was on him immediately and uh, drove him into the ground. But they are bringing out the chains, and we'll see how close he goes. Yeah, Chapman's hit made it a little bit deceiving because you're right, his forward progress brings him a lot closer to the first down marker. And as they stretch the chains, let's see, where's that nose of the football? I mean, he just barely, barely missed getting the first down. Yeah, the, the yardstick in the ball there, and uh, it is close. So. Just a couple of inches at the most. In that third quarter, the Redskins 72 yards offensively, all rushing. Great bend with 29, mixing up the pass and the run. Total now for the game, 251 yards for the Redskins offensively, 156 for the Panthers from Great Bend. Big play coming up now, third down. Under a foot to go, uh, option play to the left. Heinrich pitches back to Gardner at the last moment, and he'll have a first down. Knocking the helmets there on the left hash mark with one of the Redskins. That was Robbie Lanning, and driving forward for at least four yards, Gardner picks up the first down. And that was a very good pitch there by Heinrich Ooh. because he was uh, about to be thrown to the big loss by, uh, I believe that was Kevin Hammond. It's first and 10 at the 36. A receiver wide to the right is Corey Roberts. He is a good wide receiver. Twin backs in the backfield are Gardner and Reed. And back to throw, guard, uh, Heinrich, he's pursued from behind by Kinsinger. The ball batted away by Matt Hensley and almost intercepted. Diving for it was Zarek Freeman, but he came up short as the pass was intended. For Roberts slicing over the middle. Jason Heinrich was hit by uh, Jared Kinzinger just as he was about to deliver the ball. And, uh, he was a very poorly thrown ball. The only one that had a chance to catch it was the uh, little Redskins really, and it uh, fell in the uh, Now we're set to go here with the second and ten, and we're coming back to 35 and a half yard line. Again, Great Bend uh, seems to have captured the momentum and uh, is trying to get something on the board. A touchdown and a two-point conversion would tie it. Redskins up by eight. In motion is Dustin Brown going towards the formation. And again, Heinrich will watch him the right, keeping himself a big gainer for him. Up to the 30, the 25, sheds a man, the 20. He's to the far sideline and forced out of bounds inside the 15. Move the chains as this ball takes the Panthers all the way down. Early spot this and got the 11 or 12 yard line, the 12 on a 24 yard gain for Jason Heinrich. Skin 12. Corey Roberts is a receiver way left. Hand up. Brian Gardner going around left end. Hit at the line of scrimmage and then tackled. Second and eight now for the Panthers with an even 10 minutes to go in this ballgame.
Schaefer win in this series was 1984. Again, right up the middle to Ryan Gardner, and the tailback tries to go over that right guard. Steve Calhoun hit him at the line, and a couple of other guys come over to help knock him down to the turf after a gain of one, third and seven. The football is inside the 10 at the liberal nine. The slot is to the right. That's the strong side. Spinning around is Heinrich. He'll keep it, and he won't get much. Roger Hoffman was in the backfield quickly. Chad Adams, or rather Jim Sherrill, was also in the vicinity helping to tackle Heinrich soon, and in fact, he may have lost a fraction of a yard. It's still fourth and seven, and I don't see any movement from Dan Horn standing in front of us on the sideline. He's their kicker. Well, there's not much movement at all out there. They're just kind of standing looking at the sideline. Now they call the timeout. We went to kick. They like it had such good success that I mean, whether it's short pass out to the class where you're probably Roberts or Bell, uh, both have been open on that pass play. And uh, where you need uh, several yards, yes, I would have thought that they would have had that Randy Hubert is the field. <laughs> they're, they're getting ready to line up to uh, go into the huddle anyway. Maybe he's going to be the uh, fourth man on the field. I tell you, he went to Nebraska. He must be good. Uh, they'd probably like to have him out there as a flanker back. I would imagine this is quite an adjustment for him uh, going from a program like Nebraska to a program like Great Bend, which has uh, really been struggling to certainly do. Dan Horn is now going to try a field goal. The hold will be at the 15, so 25-yard attempt coming up. The snap is good. Here's the kick. Low, and that's no good at all. That was a line drive that hooked wide left. I don't think it was high enough either. So with 8-18 to go in the fourth quarter, they miss a 25-yard chip shot, and that really helps the Redskins. And uh, I can see some of the great Ben Panthers down on the lead. 8-18, they missed that field goal attempt. A handoff going to Jared Kinsicker, the fullback, who has carried the ball pretty effectively in the third quarter. Gains about four last week to Montoya Alsop. Runs into his own man, Eric Love, but still, well, he doesn't manage to get much after all. He's over the 25 and down to about the 26 and a half, so only a yard and a half, maybe two yards for Montoya Alsop. Jared Kinsinger laying on the turf with Bobby Wilson hovering over him. I think Jerry Kinsinger has a cramp because Bobby Wilson is over there rubbing on his right leg. Well, again, uh, and Jared Kinsinger is one of those players that's going both uh, both ways, uh, playing uh, defense uh, as well as uh, carrying the ball so many times. And, uh, I think you're now he wasn't limping before the game. Maybe he was a victim in pregame warmups like Brian Omi was before the Dodge City matchup. Coach Boone does get excited out there. It would not surprise me if he didn't, uh, uh, in some of his calisthenics, uh, forget to uh, stretch out enough and may have pulled a muscle or uh, twisted an ankle or something. But uh, he's the one on the crutch down there. Uh, it's all uh, just like Ashley Brown, the minister to the stricken Jared Kinsley there on the ground. It is third and four. Let's hope Jared's back in there soon. Steve Calhoun will take over for Kinsinger as the fullback. Alsop is the upback. Hensley on the left side of the field as a wide receiver. The ball snapped from the near hash and an option to the left. Chapman will keep it run into Simonson, spin away from him. Now the Aguilar punt, almost blocked, but Aguilar gets it away and it's high, hanging, spiraling, bounces at the 38, takes a bit of a great bend bounce, or actually hit at the 34 and bounce back and right about at about the 34 yard line. That was just a tremendous uh -huh. Six. Liberal needs to put a good stand out there defensively now. Jason Heinrich is the QB in his second year as a starter. The right-handed thrower under center with two men in the backfield. He's got two receivers. Bobby Williams shifting over from tight end to play one of the positions. A throw to the right side of the field and a quick hitting pass caught by Dustin Brown at the 41. Right under 
underneath Lamar Chapman. Again, Brown goes out that way. Chapman confronts him. Second and four. Williams and Terry Delfer wide to the left. They hand off. Now Heinrich will pitch it back to Ryan Gardner. He's met at the line of scrimmage, but he keeps the legs moving, bouncing off the tackler to the 45, and he might have a first down. Oh, yeah. Freeman pounded him so hard, I think he knocked Gardner into another man, and that kind of keep, kept Gardner on his feet, allowing him to get extra. I bet he won't be grinning if the Panthers come back, though, and score a touchdown this possession. It's 420 to go in the game. A pitch back to Gardner, almost over his head, and that gives the Redskins time enough to sweep him down. Roger Hoffman was in the backfield all over Ryan Gardner, dropping him for about an eight-yard loss. Roger Hoffman's going to get the tackle and for a huge loss. And I tell you, who helped make that play was Bobby Wilson, who was pressuring the quarterback, Heinrich, forced him to make the pitch immediately. And uh, it was not a very good pitch. Ryan Gardner had to juggle the ball a little bit. And uh, Roger Hoffman was on the back. Football is back to the Panthers' 39. Third and 15 and a half yards. 340 to go down the game. Redskins up by eight. Williams and Roberts are the receivers to the Redskins side of the field. To throw Heinrich. Pressure. He gets off the pass, but it's incomplete. Corey Roberts, but Bobby Wilson, who sacked Jason Heinrich earlier, was in his face. And boy, he is holding that left arm very limply. Now Bobby Williams is going to have to punt. He had three and a half minutes to go. Aguilar is deep. Good snap. Not much pressure this time, and Williams gets off a pretty good punt. Taken at the 20 by Aguilar. Moves to the left. Now between the hash marks at the 30. He's got some blockers at the 30-yard line. Aguilar knocks side. Of course, they flip Sean Yabara and they're drawing at each other down there. The official does have a penalty flag down right on the 20-yard line. This is probably going to move it back to, uh, I would guess, the 10-yard line. A little rest in the Panthers are clapping. And we haven't had an indication yet, but the Redskins are walking that, that direction. Now well, we have an indication. Well, that was a big uh, play by the Redskins there, getting Gardner in the backfield, forcing the Panthers to punt. Sure, this is going to knock the Redskins back towards that Panther goal line, but with 3.15 to go, the Redskins can eat up some clock. Boy, this is really going to drive them back, though. Now, this isn't such good news. Back to the 10. Yeah, I think that's what I said earlier. I saw the fight. There was no question about the, uh, the call. It was a clip, and uh, unfortunately, uh, the Liberal Redskins are going to have to uh, make a 90-yard drive or at least about a 40 or 45-yard drive and have this clock out there to hold on for a week. Jared Kinsinger is back in the game as fullback. Normally sure-handed, fake handoff, Chapman rolling right's going to keep it, turns it upfield to the 15, bounces off a man to the 20, he's into the backfield 30, this is a race to the 40, he's at midfield, the 45 of the Panthers, Captain goes to the 30, he's at the 20, left sideline 10, 5, touchdown! A 90-yard run for Chapman, and the Redskins have it in the bag. Up in that 97 yards last week, 90 yards this week, Lamar Chapman is a tough, tough player out there. At the end of the game, when everyone else is tired, he just calls his own number, sweeps around, around, right in. The same two places that he went earlier tonight, the same play that he called his own number on at the Garden City last week, Josh. Now ran uh, Pat Jones was uh, in hot pursuit, but uh, he just got flat out ran in and scored that nine yard run. That is incredible. Lamar Chapman with three TD rushes tonight, all of them for 30 yards or more. Aguilar's point after. It is 21 to 6, 239 to go. Lamar Chapman 
has 165 yards on touchdown runs alone, 225 yards rushing for the game. Aguilar's kick bounces at the five, taken by Marcus Reed near his goal line. Up to the 10, the 15, left past the 20, and he's hit at the 25, stays on his feet though, pinballs ahead to the 30, and then Kevin Hammond greets him and knocks him sidewise between the hashes. He's tackled at the 29. And that's where Great Bend will take over, trailing by 15 points with an even two and a half minutes to go. Close game, 14 to 6. Down in the shadows of their own goal post. Mark Chapman was standing to elude uh, around the right end, throws across the middle of the field. And there was absolutely no pursuit uh, on the uh, Great Bend campus. Uh, he outran the Tyner's going to have to throw, flips it into Pat, flat to Ryan Gardner, makes a good catch in the knees, he's got a first down past the 40, down to the 45, and close to the 50, that was a fine play by Ryan Gardner, first of all reaching over, catching it around his shins, and then taking it ahead as the blocking materialized. Pick up a close to 20 yards and to the Panther 48. Nice tackle there by Philip Aguilar. Uh, it was late and way downfield there. It was a very short tackle and uh, he uh, certainly prevented a, a real long game. A minute 55, the Panthers are going to have to hustle. Somebody must have called the timeout because the clock's not moving. There's an official's timeout on the field for Garner to adjust his helmet, I think. Chin strap, a little bit banged up. He's had to uh, handle a lot of big hits tonight. Heinrich backs up and will throw, looks to the left side, dumps it off to Gardner, up the middle in the Redskin territory to 45. And at the 40 yard line, he's finally brought down by Kevin Hammond here. Twin receivers split left and right. Heinrich will throw for the third play in a row. And again, he goes to Gardner. Catches it at the 40. This time he won't get much. Ooh, he got jarred at the 39 yard line. That was a hard tackle. Uh, it was a between tackle. That was, getting wrong, but that was right in the middle of the field and he was spinning around when he took a hit. Has been the Lamar Chapman show the last two weeks. Split receivers and a split backfield. Heinrich will throw. Kinsinger pressuring him. And so Heinrich just dumps it off, wanted Marcus Reed, but the ball's incomplete. More importantly, he just got rid of that before Kinsinger was able to sack it. Yeah, the ball was on the feet of Marcus Reed, but there wasn't ever any chance that's completing it because he was backheading as fast as he could. Two receivers out there, now a minute 10 to go. Heinrich to throw. I'm not going to run the ball at all now. Lost it down the left sideline, and the ball's tipped away. Philip Aguilar got high in the air to knock it free of Dustin Brown. That was a great defensive play. Well, Philip Aguilar is playing center field down there. Uh, I really thought that he might have a chance at another interception, but he, uh, his timing wasn't just exactly right, and there was also the possibility that uh, the receiver of the bound was going to come up with it. Aguilar with three interceptions this year, had five last year as a junior. Also picked off a pass in the state championship game when he was a sophomore. Nine career interceptions for Philip Aguilar, who has been a terrific defensive back for the Redskins. Not to mention the great job he's done as a kicker during his time at Liberal High. Fourth and nine, they're going for it. Heinrich steps off the pocket. Drills it downfield, and the ball through the hands of Zarek Freeman. He could have picked that ball off at the five-yard line, but it's really better that he didn't intercept the ball. And I don't know what he didn't think of that at the last minute, because he had a completely green on it all the way and had it in his hands, and then it just looked like he dropped it almost intentionally, thinking we'd rather have the ball downfield at about the 39-yard uh, yard line rather than down here inside of our five. Well, the Redskins will take over now on downs. Their own 39-yard line with only 58 seconds left. Things looking good for the Redskins in terms of winning on homecoming night. Kevin, or Brian Omi, rather, is wide to the right. Eric Love split left. Hensinger takes the ball up the middle. He'll have a first down, backpedaling to the 50-yard line on a gain of 11. Hensinger had the key fumble recovery in the last Garden City possession last week, helping preserve the 17-16 liberal triumph. Talked the ball up earlier in this half, but it wound up not burning the Redskins as Great Ben missed a 25-yard field goal. Hand off Kinsinger again up the middle. He'll have a solid five or six-yard carry as 
The Redskins keep the ball in the hands of Jared, who has sure hands most of the time. And this could very well be the last play of the game as the clock is ticking down 22, 21 to 20 seconds. The Lamar Chapman 90-yard touchdown run iced it. We'll have one more play, 15 seconds on the clock. Chapman will just go down on one knee, I imagine. And he'll back up, go down on a knee, two yards behind the line of scrimmage, and that's that. Redskins will win. 21 to 6 the final. We'll be back in a moment.